Disinformation and conspiracy theories are clouding the cleanup of Hurricane Helene. Some of the wildest claims came from Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. She wrote on X, yes, they can control the weather. It's ridiculous for anyone to lie and say it can't be done. However, it is unclear who they are that Green is referring to in that scenario. In another post earlier on Thursday, Green shared a map of the states affected by Helene with an overlay of their political leanings by county. One X user wrote, people with decades of experience have never seen anything like this. We've never seen this before because it was man-made or at the very least man-influenced weather manipulation. Another user said, feds are confiscating all of the land even if the houses are standing and will bulldoze everything. Per the New York Times, per the New York Times, at least 225 people have died and there are ongoing searches for missing people from the Category 4 storm. Thousands remain without power and access to critical necessities. Green and former President Donald Trump have been critical of FEMA's handling. So, too, have some residents, like this one, who told the New York Post that, quote, nobody's been bringing in supplies except civilians. Uh, they have also pushed what has now been proven to be a false narrative, that FEMA is using funds to house illegals instead of restoring the damage. Mm. Uh, okay, so a couple things. FEMA funds were not used to on any sort of a legal program. FEMA disaster funds are specifically allocated for uh, baby formula, water, uh, improving your house. And that's just the $750. That's not even the recovery funds, which is a whole other set of funds. The immigration, the migrant issue was a special grant set aside. Um, not to mention Donald Trump, of course, did the same thing when he was president. But aside from that, Marjorie Taylor Greene, I mean, I, I find it fascinating. I mean, we know who she's talking about. She in the past had said that uh, the Jewish people were sending out space lasers and she, you know, has been in conflict with Laura Loomer over who's crazier, but uh, some would say maybe it's because Laura Loomer is also Jewish. She has an issue with the Jewish community and disinformation. And so, you know, just like Donald Trump likes to throw everything at immigrants, any sort of problem there is, it's their fault. She tends to have that issue with the Jewish community. You believe in climate change, right? I do. And you think that extreme weather is influenced by climate change, is that correct? I do. So then isn't it somewhat accurate to say that we have a level of control over I the weather? I do think climate change is man-made. Do I think it's something that uh, the Jews are controlling? Well, she didn't she say think? Jews. Are we, we all know familiar what with cloud seeding and how it was I am not. used by the U.S. military? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you're yes. talking about. Go ahead. In the, I, I believe it was the Vietnam War. And then they, there's also uh, some reports that they might have done this during Woodstock to make it rain so that there was uh, total chaos um, during Woodstock. that. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it is a fact that there are ways to control weather to some extent. Obviously, I don't know who Marjorie Taylor Greene is talking about, and I would also say it's a trope. We know who she's talking about. I would also say that I don't know if she, if she knows who she's talking <laughs> right. about. Right. I mean, I assume she, based on the insinuation of her tweet, she's talking about Democrats. If she's posting a map of the Republican counties, um, I don't think that this makes any sense whatsoever. Um, and actually, I think it's an unnecessary distraction from the fact that this is a very intense tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, the deaths are almost surely being undercounted very significantly right now. I just spoke to a um, current state official and a former federal official who have both reported that people are literally burying their family members in their front yard because the morgues are so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. There are trucks with mm -hmm. piles of bodies being transported from Asheville to Greensboro in the hopes of finding space. At the end of this, it is entirely possible that the death toll is higher than Hurricane Katrina. And I think regardless of um, you know, whether or not the illegal immigrant fund is separate from FEMA or not, I mean, I understand that until 2023, it was a part of FEMA, that they did have an emergency shelter program that was funded from FEMA. It was changed in 2023 to make it a separate program that was funded by Customs and Border Patrol. Um, but the fact that the official uh, dollar amount that has been sent to these six states that have been affected by the hurricane has only reached about $150 million. This was confirmed by the Biden administration in a press release yesterday. When we just sent another $160 million to Lebanon and have sent an additional $300 million 
to Ukraine. Um, well, that's I mean, to, to, to not uh, to say nothing about, I know a lot of people were pointing to this on social media. Remember the floating pier we built to that's, deliver supplies yes, to Gaza? Sorry, what was it? Two hundred thirty million dollars. Three hundred million for the pier. That's what I was thinking. Not Ukraine. Something that worked. Sent billions to Ukraine. Something that was operable for a few days before Correct. it broke down and sunk into the ocean. Disaster, of course. Absolute disaster. The point being that it seems like funds, emergency funds are always put together for our friends and allies overseas, but there's no dramatic leap into action when yes. it's Americans in And danger. you're right, it is bipartisan. And it that is, bipartisan, is the biggest yes. problem is that our people who are supposed to be representing us in Congress for the most part do not give a damn about everyday Americans, and they are more than happy to fund foreign wars and conflicts and give foreign aid to all these other countries. And this is why Trump's message resonates, because America first means American citizens first. And that has not happened for a very long time. But he's not America first. He's not America citizens first. He's not global stability first. He's Trump first. Uh, with that being said, you know, I would love it. I would love it if Republicans and Democrats decided to put money into supporting American people, if they funded, you know, Medicare for all, if they fully funded teachers, you know, teachers' salaries, if they really invested in our infrastructure, you know, our infrastructure, which is in decay. It started to rebuild with, with, uh, under the Biden administration. I would love for that to happen. Instead, you had over 100 Republicans vote against the FEMA funding just this spring, and that is now playing out in real time. Now, there are other emergency funds they have access to, and of course, that is something that Biden has talked about, but it's, it's abysmal, it's offensive that you have some Republicans who think FEMA doesn't deserve to be funded, and then you also have some Republicans who voted against the funding because they don't believe climate change is real to this day. I don't care if you think it was space lasers that caused the climate change, the storm, or not. No, no, These people need support. Most ex accept that climate change is real. The debate is over the extent of the harm it's going to cause and how do we deal with the trade-offs that obviously we, you know, we don't want to hold ourselves back. We don't want to go without the comforts we have. And also we know that even if we did do that, other countries are massively contributing to the problem as well. So what if we, do, it, you know, will make a difference? Can we solve these issues by, you know, gradually transitioning and improving technologically without causing massive disruptions to our society? The extent to which it does contribute to extreme or harmful weather is still under some debate. So I think we, those we are the conversations that are about? happening. So right now, folks who live, a lot of folks have left, you know, Florida and moved to North Carolina, or they've moved to other parts of the country where they thought that they were going to be able to escape um, climate issues. Folks can't get insurance on their houses now. I mean, can we at least solve that, where people lose their homes and they're relying on a $750 uh, payment from FEMA, potentially something through bureaucracy that they have to go through much well, later? Well, there is too much bureaucracy. We don't want to, I mean, I don't want to solve these problems. I don't think this will solve problems to invent or bolster new federal bureaucracies. No. The best thing you can do is just get cash to people directly. Without and in fact, we've seen that bureaucracy in this case has made things worse. They have been trying to prevent private citizens. This has been reported yes. in multiple cases of providing aid to their fellow citizens. There's been medical tents shut down, supply tents shut down. There's been massive delays in rescue helicopters getting permission to land in some of these emergency zones. And one of the big problems in North Carolina specifically is that the head of the National Guard, who was appointed by Democratic Governor Roy Cooper, took three days to mobilize a mere 500 troops out of the 5,500 total that had to be brought in from other states. Now, Roy Cooper could fire the head of the National Guard for this delayed response. He has not. Joe Biden could federalize the response and supersede the state's poor handling of the crisis. He has not done that. So there's all of this confusion and inability for the FEMA administrators who are there on the ground, the officials, the staff, to give people what they need and also let people who are trying to help each other do that for one another. Yeah. That so this, should be happening. This happens. I, it's no excuse. I mean, I was in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria, and uh, it, you couldn't even get through the streets. I mean, some of it is, is logistical, right? It's not just that they can't. It takes three days. It's that when roads are shut down, when there are but trees blocking. But he didn't send the order until three days in. That's the problem. I'm, I'm, but this is, I'm, I'm not saying it's an excuse. And, and across the board, these types of situations should be improved upon, especially since there are more storms happening. But oftentimes there is a delay and there is a how do we organize in the face of chaos, whether your phone's not working and you don't, you can't 
reach your administrator. The phone lines are down. Um, the power is down. I mean, there's just logistical stuff that happens on the ground level, the FEMA administrators, to the top th that they can't communicate. Um, that's why mutual aid is so important is suddenly neighbors start to realize, well, the only way that we can help each other is uh, helping each other, you know, pull the, 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 the power lines up again, which is very dangerous, don't do that. Um, or, you know, saw uh, the trees that have fallen so you can get access through the road and check in on your, your yeah. elderly neighbor. George Bush took a lot of flack, right, for the Hurricane Katrina response because he was the sitting administration. So if that was fair, I think it was, I think it's fair to knock the administration for the response currently, well, even if the problems are you know, more fundamental and have to do with the federal bureaucracy. We have Alejandro Mayorkas at an upscale men's clothing shop on Saturday strolling around that. with bags of like fancy sweaters. I remember when Condoleezza Rice was accosted for shoe shopping in the middle of Katrina, which rightfully so, but no one seems upset that Mayorkas is not working around the clock to make sure that this disaster is handled appropriately. These people... Uh, genuinely and rightfully feel like they have been totally forgotten and left behind. Mm. Uh, you don't even see much coverage of this anymore after this past weekend. And I think it's shameful the way that these people have been treated. No one seems to be really taking this seriously. And no one seems to understand really the gravity of what's happened here. I mean, we really are probably looking at 1,000 to 1,500 people dead. Mm. That's just terrible. More rising coming up next.